Good morning and welcome to the Staffline Group PLC Trading Update Investor Presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged and they can be submitted at any time using the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Simply type in your questions and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company can review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it is appropriate to do so. Before we begin, I would like to submit the following poll. And I would now like to hand you over to CEO Albert Ellis. Good morning to you. Good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you for joining us on the slightly chilly morning being beamed out from central London. Um, we're delighted to be here with you following our uh, trading update this morning at seven o'clock. I'm joined by Daniel, Daniel Quint, my um, erstwhile CFO. Um, and of course, uh, my name is Albert Ellis. I'm CEO of the Starfline Group. Um, Thank you for joining. And I just wanted to start, as we always do, with a brief reminder that the group is in a very, very strong position. And much of the positive news that's come out this morning has been the result of the leading market positioning which the group the group commands. 35,000 temp workers, the largest by volume blue collar recruiter in the country. We're, we're, we're over 400 sites with customers right across the England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland and the Republic. And of course, we've got many thousands of learners in prisons. We're in People Plus. We are um, performing a vital role in education in prisons. So, with, with, with that, we're going to start with the. Daniel's going to take us through the highlights um, in a minute, and um, I'll I'll be back in a few. Minutes. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much, Albert, and uh, happy New Year to everyone. Still, I think, um, and pleased to take you through the the key numbers and the key headlines from uh, our trading update this morning. So against a, you know, a challenging backdrop of 2023, um, we set ourselves the aim of, of growing market share. And that's something that we've achieved, uh, as is illustrated by revenue growth of 1.1%, which is uh, comparatively a, a good performance uh, in, in the sector. Um, this has been underpinned by expansion of strategic partnerships uh, and uh, renewals and contract wins, which Albert will speak about a little later. Additionally, um, driven by those good trading conditions, we delivered a, a good net cash number of £3.8 million in, on a pre rfs 16 basis. Um, and uh, that is ahead of expectations that the market had for us and allowed us to carry out a £5 million share buyback program. And finally, um, we ended the year with uh, really strong levels of banking facility headroom of 60 million plus. Um, so that summary uh, against that challenging uh, market and economic backdrop is something that we're, we're pleased to be entering 2024 with. A bit more of the detail about that now. Um, you'll see that we are underlying operating profit is in line with expectations. And um, although the revenue was up 1.1%, we did see, of course, some of the similarities of uh, other realities in, in the recruitment sector flow through to our numbers as well, where gross profit was down 2.1%, which is a mixture of um, some of the softening in permanent recruitment activity, as well as some of the higher margin contracts in People Plus coming to an end, uh, and therefore that flowing through to, to gross profit. But what's very important, of course, as we enter 2024 with, um, as Albert will comment later, some improvement potentially in consumer demand, especially as inflation decreases and interest rates possibly come down, is that we have 90 percent uh, plus of a temporary worker activity in our in our group. And that's helped us be resilient in 2023 um, and will continue um, to support us as we as we come into 24 with consumer demand hopefully turning a corner. Just coming to the, the balance sheet and net cash, I think very important to recognise that we had strong trading cash flow in 2023, being materially ahead of expectations, as I said, um, but we're left with some really excellent, uh, an excellent strong balance sheet as we come into 24. Um, leverage at uh, low at 0.5 times EBITDA, interest rate cover at 3.5 times, and still protected by our interest rate cap through to October of this year, 2024. 
And at the end of last year, we refinanced our banking facilities. Um, so they're extended now for another four years um, with improved terms. And we're you know, really pleased with, with that position as we enter a year, 2024, with potential opportunity for economic recovery um, and all the banking facilities that allows us to take advantage of that potential position. And finally, just to comment on uh, the net uh, cash bridge, and you'll see this on screen as I've presented it, um, very, we wanted to point out that actually we grew before share buybacks of £5 million and growth working capital investment of £2 million. We actually grew cash by £5.8 million from 5 to 10.8, but then we invested that in those two areas of our activity, the share buybacks and in our peak um, activity when we were able to grow and invest in, in working capital and, and grow the opportunities for the business over the, over the medium term. Um, so uh, the delivery of, of those numbers during 2023 allows us to come into 2024 with a very strong balance sheet and, and some good tailwinds there. I'll hand back to Albert now just to take us through some of the key operational highlights of 2023. Thank you, Daniel. Um, well, if you were with us at the half year, you would have noticed that we had quite a mountain to climb. Uh, first half of this year in the UK certainly was a very challenging um, period. You remember that it was the, it was the back end of the energy crisis. Um, interest rates had taken off um, and there was lots of doom and gloom. And our customers were affected by this and therefore demand was impacted. In particular, um, the UK GB recruitment business was, was impacted, customers um, sending temps back, back um, you know, not seeing demand in the, in the shops and, and, in, and, and in the retail stores. And so the first six months was challenging. And so we had a mountain to climb, but we had a pathway and we were confident. We set out our objectives um, and we've listed them on the left-hand side there. And I'm just going to touch on the outcomes for you. So under the first point, organic market share growth, the business really made a huge step in this direction with GXO Logistics, one of the world's largest pure play logistics firms, American based, listed in the stock on the stock market in, in, in the US. Um, very substantial business, highly acquisitive, fast growing, one of our key customers. We, we secured a, a significant expansion in that business and indeed it came on stream in the second half of this year, not, not, not the sort of uh, elevated levels we were expecting, um, but because the economy was a bit softer, as you've seen retail sales a bit down, but it certainly all delivered as we expected. And then the Republic of Ireland, really a, a major strategic win there um, with the police force in the Republic of Ireland. We're gonna be doing um, back, back office administrative operational hiring for them um, for the next two years. And this is in an area where we set out our stall in terms of our strategy to be stronger and larger, and that's in the Republic. And then, you know, not, 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 not last but not least, Morrison's a very, major retailer um, in the food food business. We, we expanded our market share that we have almost 100% sole supply ship, both at Morrison's and AM Fresh. And then at Tesco's and M&S, both, both of those retailers doing very well um, during the Christmas period. And uh, we were extending our market share and our footprint within them. And indeed, we extended the contracts that we have. So very, very good performance on market on market share growth. Now, the second point is, um, were we going to see the traditional peak? And there was a lot of nervousness um, in the market up to up to and including Christmas. But as you've seen, even indeed this morning with every the online logistics business, um, how they've how they've um, delivered record parcels over the Christmas period. And indeed, you know, there have been good reports of um, the Christmas peak in many areas coming in line. And so we, we expect, expected um, to see an increase, and indeed in quarter four, we saw 5% up, and this compares to 12% down in the first half. So it shows you the sort of game of two halves that 2023 was, um, was revealed itself to be. Um, we did exit the skills market as we promised at the half year. That is all detailed in the statement. And then finally, um, consumer sentiment indicators. Uh, you know, th this is a mixed bag because whilst we were seeing a little bit of positives and some lights at the end of the tunnel, inflation persistent, obviously coming down, but still elevated. Um, 
but retail sales, um, you know, were, were tipped to have fallen quarter four versus three. And I think the market was a bit disappointed about that. That would have affected our logistics, some of our logistics businesses and also our retailers. So what we've done in the next slide is just give you the brand names, some of our largest clients, where we've added in there at the top, the Guard, which the Garda, which is um, the police force of Republic of Ireland. Um, as a key win, we'll be working with them as, our, as their key strategic recruitment partner. Um, another, another name just to mention is Sainsbury's. Um, they also, you know, had a robust Christmas and also they are looking to help. We are looking to help them um, indeed expand our, our business there. So th there's the names and there's some of the detail in terms of sites with GXO um, and, and the sorts of contracts that we've that we've enjoyed in the second half. And this is our strategy was to really drive organic growth whilst the market was in uncertain. On to the, um, the advertised vacancies, which is, a, you know, some stats that uh, obsesses some of the, uh, the economists um, in the market. Um, and you, as you would have known, if you've been reading and, you know, if you've been putting your head into a, a business section of any newspaper or broadsheet, um, every now and again, there's a doom and gloom article on, you know, falling vacancies. And indeed, you can see from May um, and June, you can see the vacancy you know, data has been falling. And that's been widely reported by Michael Page group, um, by uh, Hayes, and also by Robert Walters in the last two weeks, uh, that, you know, the permanent recruitment market is actually in decline. You can see that it started in, you know, earlier in the year, but actually the steeper falls are in November, December, which is obviously in line with um, with the recruitment sectors reporting over the last 10 days. Um, our, I will say two things about this. One is we've been at, we've been at very high and elevated levels, um, as you can see. If you go back to the beginning of COVID, um, we're still actually ahead of the first six to nine months of the two-year period, the three-year period under review. But uh, the second point, more important point, is customers tend to postpone their hiring. Um, uh, activities, particularly if there's a little bit of uncertainty in November and December, you get lots of um, international companies working on, on December year ends, will just postpone those starts into January. And indeed, when we've looked at our permanent recruitment business, the white collar in particular, with the Omega engineering niche, we have seen that whilst we also suffered a little bit of a downturn in the quarter four, we actually um, are seeing that the first quarter is relatively OK and our and our January starts are in line with expectations. So a little bit of a bounce back. So I, I'm very interested to see the next set of stats, which uh, will tell us, as Hayes put it, um, what the return to work looks like. And then... <laughs> Companies view this is an outlook uh, view, so it's not perfect in the sense that it's a, it's you know the REC and the, uh, the, the, you know the the, Republic, the 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 recruitment and employment confederation they canvass their their members and they get a reading. So this is sort of not perfect, but it does give you a direction of travel, and you can see it's, you know the company's view of their own prospects are slightly improving, although they remain pessimistic about the overall economy, which I see is um, is still in the negative. So, you know, a mixed view there from the market in terms of recruitment. Uh, we are a 90% temp business. Therefore, we're slightly adjacent to this market. In fact, if customers are quite nervous about hiring, they will tend to use temps more. And, and indeed, in the last recession, Staffline did see a surge in temps towards the end of the recovery, you know, once the recovery set in and once the economic, um, economic stats started to improve. With that, um, I'm going to come to the outlook. Uh, I'm going to spend a bit of time with uh, some of the macros and also People Plus in particular, as we haven't really spoken too much about People Plus or Ireland. Um, but starting with the macros, uh, look, headwinds are going to continue. I'm not going to stand out um, as, 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 as someone who doesn't, doesn't believe that headwinds are in the market when, when all of the, the, the sector reporting at the moment um, is uncertain. But I will say this that it'll affect permanent recruitment, of which we have about five to 10%, 90% uh, of our business is temp, and it will affect um, confidence, of course. Um, so, you know, volumes and demand in our end customers may still be affected. But we do think that this year will hit signal, you know, some sort of recovery. We don't know when, um, but, but the, the macroeconomic 
environment is is going to stay challenging, we believe. Um, in People Plus, it's been a year of mixed fortunes. One, we've had to close and exit a business. Uh, skills where in, in-person classroom-based training is just really not economic in a high, inv- high inflation environment and where we have high levels of employment um, and low levels of unemployment. So um, we've exited that market. But we've seen super success in justice where we've been extended during the year for two years. And indeed, we've now bid for um, 400 and, you know, about 400 million pounds worth of justice contracts over the next stretching from 2025 through, you know, in some of them are up up to 10 years. So we've got the largest bid pipeline that I've seen since I've been associated with the business. And of course, we had the, the, the tough decision to make, you know, very recently where we looked at all of our options um, and we decided not to cut costs further in People Plus, but to maintain the transformation. The new management team is settling in well and to invest in our bid and operational capacity. We've got lots and lots of bids outstanding. We're waiting um, indeed in the next qu- two quarters for some for some um, results. And then we'll, in the second half, we'll be hearing about our big justice um, bids where we're, we're bidding for more than we currently have. Um, that, of course, means that um, profits will be hit this year, and we've indicated by about 65, 67%. Um, but we're looking through that to the upside. Um, and if we win these contracts that we're, 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 we're very po- positive about, we will see that impact 25, 26, and 27, and indeed give the business some really um, some, some real visibility. So on to recruitment. Uh, recruitment is 80% in terms of our results of the business. And um, yeah, as I said, customers are facing headwinds and permanent recruitment is certainly not expected to improve in the short term. Other than in niches like engineering, um, in the public sector, we think that that's, that's a little bit more resilient. Um, and whilst it doesn't boom, it also um, has, has minimum levels of, of recruitment. And we'll see that in Ireland this year, I think, a little bit more. But our efficiency programs, which we've detailed in the statement, those cost cutting programs where we've taken an we've taken a view that we need to keep our cost base very tight with the inflationary pressure on wages and salaries and and, and on staff and employees. We've had to make those productivity savings to pay for some of the inflationary pressures. And so I'm delighted that the management team have have done that and delivered these savings. Um, The Garda contract, I I can't emphasise how important this is for us. We've been investing in the Republic of Ireland for some time, and this is a landmark win, our first win of real scale in the market and just delighted for the team in Ireland that they've managed to achieve this and their their numbers will jump this year um, uh, as a result of that and and you know more power to them absolutely delighted and my final comments are that the blue collar temps will be in demand um, h223 we saw growth um, that should continue into H124. You know, H123 was very tough. H124, I think, hopefully, we, we will be showing some increases and that will, you know, that, that will annualize out and that will support the, the, the results. And, and then finally, just on a few thoughts around the business from a financial point of view, not, not wanting to step on Daniel's toes, but as an investor myself, um, I'm delighted that 24 is going to have a positive profit after tax um, with uh, no amortization, no no goodwill write-offs uh, or amortizations that we've faced in the past. Um, you know, certainly we're looking at a higher cash generation year um, in, in 2024 than we've seen for, for many, many years, um, a clean year, um, a year that the, the businesses have been transformed. We don't, we're not budgeting for a recovery in 24. We're looking through 24 and to 25 and 26, where we'll see the fruits of our market share growth um, as, as the economy um, improves during that time. So with that, thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for watching. It's just a short presentation. We're, um, we're only pre close trading update today, so don't want to waste too much of your time and, and, and very happy to answer questions. Yeah, thank you, Albert. Um, So we are now going to answer some of the questions that have already been posted. Um, There have been a couple, one or two, that have already been pre-questioned, and we'll continue to answer the ones that you post um, in the the question and answer page uh, on the right-hand side. So, Albert, the the first one for you on the right-hand side. 
Yes, uh, question about shareholders being rewarded um, and, and uh, it, you know, and asking us whether resuming a dividend payment would be better money spent than on buybacks. Well, the, 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 the buyback um, for lobby posed the same question to us, whether we should be focusing on buybacks uh, and, and that would be better spent than particularly at low levels when the share price is, is, is at these levels, um, whether that would represent more, more value for shareholders. So we have the two competing arguments all the time on the board. The debate uh, rages um, outside of the company with our, with our investors. And indeed, we, we, we make sure that with, with our investors and with the board and with our advisors and and, and, and everybody, all of our stakeholders, that we make the right decision when it comes to shareholder returns. Um, and at this point, um, you know, we, we have felt over the last 12 months that we got good value for our share buybacks and we reduced the, the shares by 10%. And as you know, that means if you're, you're a continuing shareholder, your, your, your value would have increased in terms of your share of earnings. Thank you, Albert. Um, second question, which I think you may respond to as well, is a bit more detail about the Republic of Ireland Garda contract, what type of staffing we're providing, um, how long it's for, um, and how significant it is to the division in Ireland. Yes, I mean, certainly in the Republic, it's very significant. I would say, though, our Northern Ireland business is the market leader and is 20% of the market in Northern Ireland. So um, they're, very, they're used to, um, the team in Belfast are very used to winning um, material contracts um, in Ireland, but the Republic, where, where we've been investing in the last few years, uh, this is this is definitely um, a landmark win for us. And the nature of the biz, of, of the recruitment is is back office finance support um, and and administrative. Obviously, frontline um, is a totally separate um, activity which is undertaken by the Guard themselves. But all other um, recruitment will be done by us. It's for two years initially. And we're expecting, you know, over a million pounds worth of fees. And we would expect a healthy flow through from that uh, as we've actually already made the investment in Ireland in, um, to cope with that sort of growth. We won't have the sort of cost increases that we would normally associate with, 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 with winning a large contract. And this was a strategic position we took two years ago, which was to maintain our infrastructure, our operational capacity. It's the same strategy we're doing with People Plus so that when we win, we can, we can actually deliver, we can mobilise. Thank you, Albert. Um, next question uh, for me, which is to what extent is the strong cash balance a function of slightly lower volumes versus good working capital management? Um, actually, it's it's a result of good working capital management um, because our cash position at the end of the year is actually directly impacted by volumes in the last four, five, six weeks of the year. And those volumes are actually higher, as Albert um, already talked about um, our chargeable hours um, in our main division of recruitment GB. Um, in the last quarter, Q4 of 2023, we're up 5%. So the, the cash balance um, is a direct result of strong working capital management as uh, across all three of our divisions, whether that's Recruitment GB, um, the team in Ireland and People Plus, all, of, all teams are really humming and have uh, really delivered a, a very strong year in terms of maintaining tight control over cash collections and working with our, our customers and suppliers to that end. Next question is, how should we think, be thinking about capital allocation going forward? Is there an intention to do more share buybacks? I think from um, the first question that Albert answered, you can probably take an indication that that's uh, very possible, I think is a, a fair answer to that question. Um, next question, broker's use has reduced both 24-25 forward earning forecast by around 30%. Can you give some more colour on why the future trading outlook has deteriorated by so much? I think um, Albert, uh, well, we in our trading statement and Albert in a number of comments today regarding um, People Plus in the slight commissioning trough we're in um, has meant uh, that's been the key driver um, as to um, why there's been that, that, that downgrade. Um, clearly, additionally, if the recovery had come earlier, if the economic recovery had come earlier, maybe in 23, then clearly the recruitment business would be further along sooner, um, although they performed very well comparatively in 2023 and with the Garda contract 2024, Ireland, Ireland looks strong. Um, but those would be the key drivers um, with People Plus being the primary one and economic recovery and the lag uh, driven by those interest rate increases from last year, um, just delaying some of that 
consumer sentiment um, improvement a little bit um, as to why that's just been pulled out a, a year further on. I don't know if you had any. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to just add that, first of all, um, in terms of operational underlying EBIT, that number is around about 25%. The, the forward earnings forecast also contains some interest um, because of higher interest rates. So there's two elements there. So the, the, the operational EBIT is down by about 25%. And that is over 12 months, not just in the last, so it's, it's, it's it, it, over a 12 month period, that's been the total downgrade. Um, and you and you know that the, there's been significant deterioration in the market since January 2022, and geopolitically, the world is in a much more dangerous place. So that is the extent of the downgrade. A 12-month period is 25%. Um, however, if you look at the sector, um, Page is in the middle at about mid-30s, 30, 38% over the last 12 months, and indeed double digits just in the last month. Um, Walters is... Um, you know, is slightly less, probably in the mid twenties. And uh, if you look at Hayes, that's the largest downgrade over the last twelve months. Their uh, at twenty four outlook has been um, adjusted downwards by almost sixty percent. I think it's the exact numbers around the mid fifties, high fifties, fifty eight percent. So in that sort of context, we have not seen um, the, the downgrade in outlook over the twelve months that the rest of the sector has seen. And ours is specifically to do with the look-through impact of the People Plus commissioning cycle. We're in a, we're in a, the last year of, of, of this government. Uh, governments don't tend to spend money or commission large initiatives um, in their final year. So there's a political hiccup that one always gets, which will hopefully be fired up by any new incoming administration, which is likely to be 25, 26. We've also got all of the bids that we bid for now coming in 25, 26. So we're looking through that downgrade this year, um, to be honest, and um, and looking to the, the value of People Plus um, to us as an enterprise. Thank you, Albert. Um, some more questions. Another one about um, with the net cash being higher than expected, that free cash up for share buybacks. I think I've answered that already. Um, another question about dividends, um, which Albert answered first off. Um, another question here. The bid pipeline at People Plus is impressive at 400 million. One assumes that competition will be tough. Do you envisage People Plus returning to previous high margins or this business transition to a low, lower margin business? Very good question. And uh, you are right that it is. I mean, the actual number, I think, is uh, 400 million for justice, 250 million for employability and 200 million for other contracts, community services, local authorities. Um, and other contracts. So some significant numbers there that in the bid pipeline. Um, yes, the the justice ones are the ones we where we have the most market share, and but we 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 are targeting higher market share because we're performing well in justice. Um, in the prisons, we're the highest performing business in terms of the performance and uh, the, the the measurements, the KPIs in which you judged. We are the highest in our market, so um, we, we're confident that um, we, we can we can win. We're also very enthusiastic to bring new practice and to bring best practice to all of the prisons in which we're working, and we're doing that in the employability arena as well. Specifically, restart. Um, we really are um, performing well in restart, and where we are struggling a little bit, we are actually looking at best practice, and we're totally focused on our operational excellence. So we're confident in the prospects for People Plus, but you know the world is actually in a high inflation environment, and that has affected margins of all companies, particularly services companies, where getting the best people um, can cost can cost. And so you know we we, we would look to seek to maintain our margins. Um, in the medium term as opposed to improve them, that would be, you know, that would be a good result for us. Thank you, Albert. Um, just a few other questions here. Scope for further buybacks. We've answered that question already uh, regarding the receivable facility at year end. Um, yeah, very low drawdown at year end in terms of our financing um, and we're in net cash position. So nil drawdown at the moment. Um, talking through some of the opportunities for People Plus, I think, Albert, you covered that just now. Um, and what do we see as the impact of increased regulation in the market for recruitment GB? Albert, you might want to... Yeah, I mean, the impact of um, the regulate. Look, we're, we're seeing lots of government um, and opposition um, talk about flexible markets, how good they are, what are the weaknesses in terms of um, job security. Specifically, the Labour administration is talking about 
um, how, how they guarantee, how they can ensure their companies guarantee minimum hours, which we're of course, um, which we're of course in, in favour in terms of people working um, a minimum set hours so that they can earn um, the sort of money that they wish to earn. Uh, we wouldn't like to see, you know, a sort of iron fist approach, which um, which has unintended consequences. But we, we we're very encouraging. Uh, of, of our clients giving uh, giving our teams and our attempts uh, some some job security and minimum hours. That's those are the big regulatory um, regulatory pushes we see, and we see them as endorsing um, our very high level and high compliance and good work strategy. We see that supporting it. Uh, we also see the actions against tax evasion, um, particularly in the sort of grey market of national insurance and other other areas where, where you see umbrella company. You might have read about umbrella companies and others, other vehicles, offshore trusts and loans, and some of the um, television presenters have been involved and have been, you know, have have actually well pub have publicly been hurt by those schemes. I mean, we do not have anything to do with that sort of grey market, and it, indeed, it works to our favour, and our customers do not want to be involved. So we see our compliance and our good work strategy as actually as, as actually a, a supporting strut for our strategy. Thank you, Albert. Um, a few more questions. PwC has suggested that hiring is likely to pick up generally in FY24. We broadly have an agreement with this. I think our, our comments are that we are broadly in agreement with that. When that happens, of course, is, uh, is the question, but I'm sure uh, interest rate uh, reductions possibly, um, and potentially the, the 6th of March um, budget um, statement by the Chancellor may, may have a bit to do with that as well. Um, is the focus still on organic growth? And if so, do you expect to anticipate further contract wins during FY24 to increase market share? Yes. And yeah. yes. Yes and yes. Um, are there any issues with days beyond terms? Um, no, we uh, at the moment, we always have small things around, around the outside. But at the moment, we are you know, keeping a really tight ship um, in both in all of our businesses, specifically the recruitment businesses, um, uh, the finance and credit control teams doing an excellent job there. Um, historically, as the recruitment market recovers, those who've struggled financially during the recession can find the working capital requirement of the recovery the final straw. Are you aware of any of your direct competitors being in financial distress? I think it's fair to say that we come into this year, as we did last year, with a strong balance sheet um, as the only listed large scale blue collar recruiter. Um, I think that gives an, a level of transparency. Um, and insight into our business that that uh, our customers may not have from other businesses. And I'm sure there are some businesses which are finding it quite challenging out there. But with Headroom of over 60 million in our business, we're, we're pleased to be entering 2024 in that position. Um, almost 1 billion turn. Next question, almost billion, 1 billion turnover for another year, but no substantial profit. How long can this go on? Well, I think it's important. The, the key measure in um, our group is gross profit. And that's where the fees um, uh, are attracted and, and come into play. Um, the bill in turnover includes temporary worker salaries, which of course are affected by inflation. Um, I think the performance in 2023 was resilient, um, especially in, in, as on a comparative basis to re the recruitment sector in general. And um, it's, it's very important to see that. And, and the group continues to drive its organic growth strategy that uh, delivers ongoing growth in that sector. Next question, um, in comparison to competitors, um, how have you fared? Have you seen any changes with your competitors, et cetera? I think it's fair to say that our competitors have all reported their trading updates over the last two weeks, and Albert's already commented on that, um, and that our 90% plus temporary worker base provide some defense to the um, softening in permanent recruitment, which we have seen a little bit of. Um, but of course, with 90% being in temp, then we do see some of the defensiveness and resilience in around that in the last 12 months. So um, we see ourselves of holding up quite well on a, on a comparative basis. Um, have any of your major shareholders taken advantage of the share buybacks? Yes, a number of our, share, our major shareholders have. Um, and so um, that uh, is that has been a successful process that we carried out last year uh, to the tune of five million pounds. And how much do you anticipate to pay in interest costs next year? Well, as we uh, move towards March uh, in our results, we'll see um, further information coming through regarding interest rates. A lot does depend on interest rates over the coming year, but through to the end of October, we are protected by our um, interest rate cap. So therefore, I wouldn't 
um, necessarily in 2024 expect any material differences um, from the current level of interest rates. Um, and I think that brings the questions to a close. So um, thank you very much. Albert, I don't know if you want to say the last final word. Yes. I mean, after two years of growth, uh, exceeding expectations in 21-22, we faced very challenging macros last year along the, with the rest of the sector, but we delivered um, in line with our targets. Um, and the group um, delivered an excellent cash flow result, which uh, you know, I've always believed that cash is king, particularly in a downturn. Um, and that's where, indeed, we did excel. It's a too early in the year. We're not budgeting for a recovery in the first half. Um, the economic backdrop, I think, will be mixed and we'll, be, we'll see a range of reporting. Every is a good one this morning with, uh, you know, very, very good Christmas for the, for the online parcel market. And, and retail sales was down. Uh, last week reported that it was it was lower in quarter four than it was in quarter three. So with that, we'll continue. We will have a see our market share gains continue to increase. Some of our direct competitors locally in the blue collar market are struggling. Um, we're seeing that it's particularly with tightening credits and higher interest rates. Many of these companies rely on debt to grow. Um, and our cost savings underpin the strength of the profit after tax result that we're going to be generating this year, clean, clean result with higher cash than last year. So we, we really are optimistic about that. We've got a tremendous uh, range of blue chip clients. Uh, you know, those are just some of the tip of the iceberg there. Um, and with the Republic's win of the God, of the Garda contract in the Republic of Ireland, I'm, I'm, I'm excited and expecting us to be able to, to use that when and leverage the expertise in other areas. So with, with that, we, we remain confident in the group's prospects. Um, you know, we're glad that 2023 and COVID um, is behind us. And actually, um, you know, the economic recovery will unfold at some point. And when it does, we're perfectly poised. Thank you very much. Perfect. Albert, Daniel, thank you very much indeed for updating investors today. Could I please ask investors not to close this session as you will now be automatically redirected to provide your feedback in order that the board can better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete and I'm sure will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Staffline Group PLC, we'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation and good morning to you all.